Hello everyone, today on Big Out Books, I have a very special guest with me here today in the studio. <laughs> this is Taylor, <laughs> he's been on my channel a few times before, and Taylor and I have been spending so much quality time <laughs> with each other uh, these past few weeks. We've been mm -hmm. in self-isolation together, <laughs> and it's been going great, right? I have no complaints. So yeah, uh, we thought it would be fun to do a bit of a crossover reading project together. So we're here today to tell you about that. So we thought it would be fun to assign each other some reading since we're spending a lot of time together. We're getting to know each other, you know, even better than we already <laughs> did before. So why not share our reading lives with each other a little bit more? So in today's video, we're going to be assigning three books that the other person has to read. But before we do that, I thought we'd go with a little bit of a taste test just so that we can find out and you can find out how compatible our tastes are. So I've chosen 10 books that I know that we have both read at some point in our lives and we're just gonna kind of rapid fire go through them and see how similar our tastes were and our opinions on them. So I'll say the title and then we can just quickly share whether you liked it or not, all right? Okay. All so right. our first few books are books that uh, we've read in school at some time. Yes. All right, so Frankenstein, you go first. All right, so Frankenstein, I read in grade 12 English class. It, uh, I don't remember it super well. I think I remember, I think I read the whole thing by myself. Uh, I remember I enjoyed the idea, and I it was more than I thought Frankenstein had ever been, but, you know, middle of the pack book for me. Yeah, I read this one in my first year university English course and I thought it was really boring and pretty disappointing. A lot of just the monster wandering around in Switzerland and I did not love this one although I have been wanting to like give it a try now that I'm more familiar with classics. But yeah, didn't love this one. All right, ooh, controversial one. Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. Everyone I feel like has to read this one in high school at some point or another. I'm not sure if I ever read Romeo and Juliet. We did Shakespeare in high school. <laughs> Just contradicting my whole... <laughs> I told you that before we started. Um, yeah, so we did Shakespeare. I think we did Twelfth Night. Everyone does R&J. I don't think we did R&J. Yeah, no, I know. I remember Twelfth Night for sure. I don't... Okay, so let's say it's Twelfth Night then. What do you think of Twelfth Shakespeare Night? Shakespeare in general. Okay, Shakespeare um, in general. Uh, we've gone to lots of plays together. Uh... I think very good stories, very universal stories. Uh, I have a hard time following it. I know it's kind of cliche, but I don't necessarily know what's going on. I feel like I'm in the theater and people laugh and I just smile along because I think <laughs> I'm supposed to laugh. I don't necessarily know. I get the gist of what's happening, but I don't know specifics. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, so, if not you, a big as Shakespeare fan. If you watch my channel, you know. Shakespeare shows up all the time. I liked Shakespeare in high school. I was one of those weird kids that was reading Shakespeare that wasn't assigned, like while I was in grade nine, like before we got assigned Shakespeare. Um, and then I kind of went away from him for a while. I wanted to be edgy and like the canon's no good. Um, but then I came back to him on my own as an adult and now I just really adore him. So it, it took some time apart yeah. for that to bloom. For the record, I think Shakespeare, genius, great works, <laughs> fantastic. But I think I have to try harder in order to appreciate it as much as I should. That is true. It takes not, some work. Not taking anything out of Shakespeare. Okay, here's a good one. Catcher in the Rye. <laughs> I think we both read this one in high school. Yes. Yeah. Um, Catcher in the Rye, for me, uh, interesting story. I enjoyed seeing what was happening. I didn't care for Holden Caulfield, which I think a lot of people feel that way. And a lot of people are passionate in either direction. But I didn't much care for Holden Caulfield. So reading it as a teenager... Uh, maybe I'd appreciate it more now, but as a teenager, I was just like, this guy's the worst and I <laughs> couldn't get into it. This is such a polarizing book <laughs> and I am the opposite of you. Like when I was a teenager, I was like, I am Holden Caulfield. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, not like, I just... <laughs> I identified with this one a lot. So I didn't like that we had to read it in school. I didn't like studying it and like picking it apart for analysis because for me, my reaction was like visceral and emotional. And I have reread this one uh, once when I was in university and I still liked it, even though I wasn't like teen anymore. So yeah. I think this is one that I will still continue to enjoy. That was that was me with Fifth, fifth Business. Oh shoot, I should have put that one on the list. Yeah. Fifth Business, you it's read that one in high school. I read yes. it later in life. But this I is was... like... A Canadian <laughs> classic for people who don't know, Robertson Davies. Uh, so yeah, what do you think of that one? I loved the story. I felt it was such like an interesting, just this one guy's weird life. Um, and just like the things in your life that end up mattering the most and what hits you the hardest and kind of shapes you because it's so different for everybody. And you never know when those moments are going to come. And I got so much out of it and I loved it. But then we studied it to death in English class. <laughs> and I was 
maybe a little annoyed with it by the end, but I still love the book. Yeah, I didn't have to read that one in school. I came to that one on my own and absolutely loved it. And now it's one of the options that my grade 12s can read, but no one ever picks it. And that makes me sad because I'm like, guys, this one's so weird and wonderful. But it's just like, it doesn't have an exciting premise and it's like a modern classic from the 70s. Yeah, it's so hard to sell it. No one picks that one. All right. Um, our next two are books that we read when we were dating but not living together. Mm -hmm. All right. Slaughterhouse-Five, Kurt Vonnegut. Loved it. I'm a big, anything with time travel, anything with <laughs> aliens, as I maybe have mentioned one or, one or two times on the channel, uh, gets me, and this has both, and Kurt Vonnegut's a total weirdo, uh, and what's the, the author's name in the book? Kilgore Trout. Kilgore Trout. He kind of, he makes an appearance in this, and I instantly fell in love with Kilgore Trout. <laughs> yes, so, Kilgore's the best. Yeah. Uh, big, this is like exactly the type of book for me. Yeah, and I agree. I love this one as well. Kurt Vonnegut was one of my favorite authors in high school, and this is probably my favorite book by him. Excellent. All right. Ooh, here we go. We got big boy. <laughs> Infinite Jest, David Foster Wallace. Would you like to go first? <laughs> I like Infinite Jest. I've talked about it a lot on my channel. Um, read this one in high school for the first time and then reread it again in university and have thoroughly enjoyed myself uh, both times <laughs> through this text. I, it, you know, it's kind of scary length, but I thought it was a lot of fun. Once you yeah. get into it. I didn't finish it. it. It beat me. I got, I think, 750 pages in. Were you that far? I was pretty far. I thought we were like 400 pages in. Maybe. I don't I don't know. Maybe I had 750 pages left. Mm. I can't remember. But I, I was doing my best. I was enjoying it. It It's very, it's very good. Uh, very funny in like a weird sort of way. Um, but it, it bested me. We were right. long distance dating one summer yes. and we both tried to read this book together and we do little Skype sessions and <laughs> I was like taking notes. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was not completed, but yeah. still, we had I fun. think I lost my momentum. If I could, if I, when I was reading it every day, I was good. And then as yeah, soon as I took a day true. off, I lost all my momentum. That is true with big yeah, books in general. Yeah. You just have to kind of keep going. We were also listening to The Pale King on audio when we went on a road trip last summer. Mm -hmm. uh, were you enjoying that experience? Oh, yeah. No, I very, I like David I was Foster enjoying Wallace. it too, very, but very good. unfortunately very his books are long and our road trip wasn't that long. So yeah. <laughs> we made it maybe one quarter of the way into it. Yeah. So maybe this summer we'll finish that one up. Cool. All right. Our next one up, Name of the Wind, Patrick Rothfuss. Uh, so I really enjoyed this book and I really enjoyed the sequel waiting for the third one to come out. Um, I know what you're going to say and I know your feelings about it, but for me, those issues weren't as big a deal. I enjoyed the character. I can see why somebody wouldn't, but I kind of liked the idea of a character who's just freaking good at everything and does everything. Uh, that didn't bug me the same way it bugged you. Uh, <laughs> and it set up the whole weird thing in the second one with the tree. That is the biggest thing for me. Uh, read it if you have no idea what I'm talking about. But I thought <laughs> the tree thing is crazy and that's messed up my brain a little bit. Yeah. So I'm interested to see what happens. Well, to be fair, I didn't hate this one. It was the second mm. one that I really couldn't deal with. That one really tarnished the series for me, I think. Um, this one, yeah, I I don't like the main character and he really gets on my nerves. So that kind of takes me out of it. So mm. I would say this one um, was like, okay, I liked it enough to continue on, but the second book really... Uh, made me lose interest in the series. That's Although true. I'll probably finish. I don't know. If it ever. <laughs> That's Who true. knows? All right. Uh, next one, God's Behaving Badly. So this Marie is one Phillips. of the this is one of the few that I found and, and gave to you. And I gave it to you because I knew you were reading. What were you reading at the time? Ovid's Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. So yeah. I was entrenched in some classical <laughs> mythology. Yes. So I, I gave it to you then, knowing that you maybe wouldn't much care for it. And I think you were right. It... The premise is interesting, and the premise is good. Uh, I think execution left something to be desired, especially the ending. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like we're the same on that one. It just got very, like, plot-heavy. But, like, yeah. you knew exactly what the plot was doing, yeah. so it wasn't very interesting. So, yeah, this one was a big miss for me. Um, this one, I feel like, also kind of made me angry. Just the way that the gods were characterized seemed kind of just, like, obvious. Like, yeah. uh, I don't know. So this one didn't work for me. But again, I think it was because I was just reading Ovid, which is like the height <laughs> of inspiration. And uh, this one just felt cheap compared to that. But, you know. Which I, I don't think it was it's, trying to It's be. also tough, like, when you don't like an author's sense of humor. Yeah. And, like, obviously that book graded me for some reason. But yeah. I don't think it's objectively bad. just did not work for me. All right. Vita Nostra. So this was a weird one that you were really into and then you brought to me. 
and I was like, okay, I'll give it a try, and I'm pretty sure I read the whole thing in one day. I think you did too, yeah. and it's like, this is a hardcover edition, and it is about 400 pages. Yeah. So, so for you to burn through that in a day is like Yeah, it was like, I woke up, and I, I think I read it through the whole day. And Taylor is actually a better power reader than I am. <laughs> like when he wants to finish when something, I can, once he I get, get started, it done. Yeah, yeah. Once I get started, I'm good to go. Uh, and so yeah, this one I read it all in one day. Totally weird. Uh, I don't even know if it makes any sense. <laughs> I don't. I haven't even. This was like maybe even over a year ago, and I still don't know whether I like liked the ending or what I even think of it. <laughs> it's I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. But, yeah. Uh, it was certainly something else. Do you agree, um, people who call this Harry Potter for adults? Do you think that's fitting? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, neither. I mean, that marketing confused me. Some weird magic sort of people kind of go to a school. Uh, I guess that counts. But like Ooh. young people trying to do weird sort of magic end up in a school. So I guess. But I mean, Much, that's not how yeah. I would describe it. Yeah, I, I loved this one. And it hasn't, like, it didn't read like anything else that I've read before. And I wish that there were yeah, more books sure. that were kind of like this, because, like, the mix of genres and, like, the strange tone of it uh, was so cool. I got so absorbed in this story, and I really, like, had to know what was happening. It felt like a whole series in one book, too. Like, yeah. every year that she yeah. was in school, like, I felt like we'd gone through so much together. So, anyway, I, I adored this one. I, I want to find more books that are like this, because <laughs> that was cool. Well, if you tried Harry Potter... All right. Oh, I forgot to mention, these are all books that we've now read since living together, this last oh, category. okay. All right. Uh, most recently, uh, Black Leopard, yeah. Red Wolf. Yes. This was a 10 out of 10 for me. I Really? really? I, oh, yeah. I 10 out of 10? Yeah, no. This I one is it. also very polarizing. So many See, people hate this me. book. I know, and I loved it, too. Yeah. But I think we had a good time. Like, we both went to see Marlon James yes. talk about Marlon's this book. Um and I'm so glad you came with me because, yes. like, I feel like that just helps you, like, appreciate the project more and, like, what yes. he's doing with this story. Shout out Rob for the tickets. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> so, yeah, I think we, yeah, we both love this one then. Yes. I, I, I think we're into fantasy and especially authors who are willing to, like, make the genre something completely yeah, new I mean, and if you interesting. Went, if this was, like, pitched as African Game of Thrones, I think that was, the, like, the selling point was. So if you went in expecting that, it's not quite accurate so mm -hmm. i could see maybe being a little uh not enjoying it if you were expecting something quite different yeah because it is very uh much its own thing all right cool and then the last one um is radicalized by cory doctorow which is one of the books that was uh shortlisted for canada reads this year so mm -hmm. you owned this book before it was on the canada reads long list or anything so you were ahead of the game on this one first time ever and I ended up reading this one within the past few weeks uh, because we owned it and because it was on the short list. So yeah. what was your take on Radicalized? Uh, well, I mean, there's four different, there's four short stories in it all about different, you know, political issues. Um, some of them I, I enjoyed more than others. I think a few of them uh, were almost, if it makes sense, like too on the nose, like they were almost like too realistic that it almost wasn't interesting as a thought experiment because it almost just felt too real. Um, and I don't know if that's a compliment or not, but... Um, I definitely enjoyed most of the stories and I felt a little more radicalized after I'd read it <laughs> than I was going in. Yeah. yeah. I think we both liked the same, the title story the best, right? Yes. Radicalized? Yes. Yeah. So we were on the yes. same, um, agreement with that one. Yeah. Um, overall though, I didn't enjoy this collection. Like you were saying about being on the nose, I felt it was just too heavy handed mm -hmm. that the author was really making sure that you knew what he was trying to do with the story, uh, that I felt like it lacked subtlety. And I just didn't enjoy yeah. the way that he wrote dialogue or character very much. So I'm glad I checked it out. Yeah. But I thought also all of the novellas would have worked better as short stories. Like nice yeah. like 20, 30 pages. I think for most of them they went on longer than I felt A few of them I felt were too needed. long. The first one I thought. The oh, superhero one long. I really liked because I'm a big superhero guy. Yeah. So that one I found interesting. Like if you actually got real with it. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. So that is our taste test. So according to our calculations, <laughs> out of 11 books that we've both read, what was it, seven of them? Seven. We both had a very similar opinion to, mm -hmm. and math, four? Four. <laughs> <laughs> that we felt kind of, we had, we disagreed yeah. over how much we liked it. Now, for the record, you only recommend books to me that you think I would like. Usually, That's true. Yeah. Because right? I read I a lot of boring you. literary fiction. So if we actually <laughs> just sat down and looked at all the true. books that each other read, we would get 
wildly different results, mm -hmm. I think. That's true. Because by picking ones that we both have read, I think we're skewing the data. Yeah, that's true. Bit. That's true. Like but you just looked at my bookshelf of things that I've read. I think you wouldn't pick out. That's true. So we don't like much. reading the same kinds of things usually, yes. but when we can find things that kind of overlap, it yeah. sounds like we then usually yes. have a pretty similar take. Yeah. I, I think that's true with like movies usually. Yeah. If we yeah. walk out of a movie, we usually feel kind of the same way about it. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see how we do then <laughs> uh, with our three books that we're going yeah. to be challenging each other to read. So I guess that's where we'll put this to the test. Yes. Now we had no criteria for each other. <laughs> so I don't even really know why you picked the books that you did. I will yes. explain why I picked mine, well, but we are just kind of doing this for fun. So. There was a little criteria in that don't pick books that you know I'm not going to like. Yeah. That's what you said to me and that's what I said. Yeah, I was that like, was don't ruin quarantine. <laughs> 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 Reading brings me all my happiness right yeah. So now, it didn't have so. to necessarily be a book that you think I'm going to love, yeah. but it had to be something that you don't know I'm going to hate. I tried to take that into consideration too. I also tried to keep length a consideration because a lot of my favorites are just like <laughs> long and kind of punishing. It's so though I did pick one book that is on the longer side, I really like had to justify that and I think it will be okay. okay. So who would like to go first? Do you want to alternate? Do you want to go first? Okay, yeah, you okay. do one, I do one. Yeah. Okay. I have my stack <laughs> hidden uh, okay. for secrecy. So the first book that I picked out for you is The Musical Brain by Cesar Ira. Oh. who is an Argentinian author. I am obsessed with this cover, <laughs> this neon book design. I didn't just pick it because of the cover design, though. Um, so if you want to take a look at that one. Well, I um, normally do pick my books based on the cover, so this is a good start. It's a very cool cover. So I picked this one out. It's a short story collection, and I know that you kind of tend to enjoy those. I, I picked it out because it's also a uh, work in translation, uh, which is something that I <laughs> am very passionate about reading, so yeah. I want to share that love with you. Okay. I especially tend to really bond with South American writers, <laughs> and this falls into that category. Okay. Um, the other reason why I picked this out for you is because this is so weird, but it really felt like me. Like, mm. I was reading these stories, and I loved them so much, and I'm like, this author is just doing exactly what I would want him to be doing. Like, I've never felt my tastes, like, so accurately reflected in something. So just know that. Like, it's a little <laughs> bit crazy and strange. I, but, I like, really I, like I felt like it was, like, my brain on paper, um, which was very exciting for me. So I love this one. Um, you know the shopping cart story? Yes. That's in here. I talk about one of these stories a lot. About, yes, I do know the shopping cart. It's about an evil shopping cart. So that's one of the stories in here. So if hopefully that gives you an, an understanding that okay. uh, these stories are just like, you will get to know me on a deeper level, I think. Well, I do like you, you in this. your brain. So that's bodes well. <laughs> the musical brain. All right. Okay. I'm, so. I'm excited about this one. Oh, that's good to hear. Okay. Okay. My What's turn. up for Which me? Do, okay, well, I'm going to go first. I'm going to pick the one that I knew already knew. <laughs> you so, rummaging through the couch. <laughs> I, I couldn't find this one. So I she does know this one's coming because oh. I was looking for it. And I couldn't find it. It was just sitting right on the shelf. I thought it looked different than it did. It was pathetic. Then we were both searching <laughs> for it. And it was like exactly where it should have been. Yeah. Anyway, found it. It is, this one's Personal by Lee Child. It's a Jack Reacher novel. Now... I recently got into the Jack Reacher series this past year. Um, <laughs> they are so like cartoonishly over the top, like cool, masculine guy, uh, like so muscular, you are bulletproof kind of thing. Like that's literally like a canon thing that happened to him. Um, fantastic. So I actually haven't read this one because when I do read them, they're mysteries and I kind of give away sometimes to her, whether she remembers or not, and talk about what's happening. Um, so I picked one that I haven't read, so I haven't spoiled it for her, but I do know the general Jack Reacher sort of style. So we'll see how it goes. I don't know whether you're going to like it. I think if you <laughs> can maybe buy into the like hamminess of it, you'll yeah. maybe maybe enjoy it. Uh, but you're not like a big mystery action kind of fan. I ended but, up liking Sherlock Holmes last year. That was a shock true. for me. That's so true. like maybe there's more love in my heart for mystery than maybe. I know. And you do... We have talked about Jack Reacher, the character, and you yeah. are you do find him somewhat interesting. I can't so. handle him. So, <laughs> so, yeah, that will keep things fun. This one I'm mostly curious to hear your your take on, and maybe I'll have to read it, you know, so Ooh. as you're reading it, so it's not spoiled. You can't start at 500, the 500, <laughs> just looking at the page numbers, 524 pages. That seems long for a mystery. Yeah, they're, they're fairly long, but again, that, that was probably, they usually start with, like, two chapters from the next book. Stephen King says it's the best one yet. 
Although, like, he blurbs every book. So <laughs> I feel like he doesn't have a lot of credibility there. We'd have to check the other Reachers to see if he just has it on every one. Yeah, but, but uh, okay. Uh, this one, I'm going to say this is, like, out of my comfort zone. I know. Because this is, yeah. like, very much, like, commercial genre fiction, <laughs> and that is not a world that I usually vibe with. But yeah. I'm excited to give them a try, because you have been making me laugh when you talk about your new child books. Funny. So I'm awesome. game to give this one a go. All right. right. So your next book. Oh, okay. This is one of my favorites, and I think you're gonna like it. Okay. Which is why I picked this one. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> this is a prayer for Owen Mooney by John Irving. So this is kind of the longer one that I, I picked say that for better you. Better be the longer one. Um. Yeah. This one is 620 ish. Okay. Pages. Why well, is it gonna be a 500? Yes. So okay. This is one that I feel like has a lot of like mainstream appeal. John Irving's novels were pretty popular in the 90s. This is also one that my grandpa, Cranston, really oh, liked. Okay. <laughs> so, um, a, like, okay. yeah, there's just people that I know who like this one. That was why I picked it up. And I'm kind of obsessed with the main character in this. Yeah. Owen Meany is freaking hilarious. Sounds like someone you'd like. He's so good. And whenever, he's like this, like, little guy. And whenever he talks, I'm trying to find an example, it's always in caps lock. <laughs> So he's like this little dude with this like big loud voice. Um, so he's super entertaining. But the story I think is really compelling. Um, and I think that you're going to get something out of it. Okay. And also um, the author was really inspired by Fifth Business. And right. the event of like the, the snowball throw in Fifth yeah, Business yeah. Is, is kind of similar. There's like a baseball accident in here. Oh, okay. So I think that since you like that book, I think you would maybe get something out of this one as is well. Is this a movie? Uh, Simon Birch, I think, was loosely based off of it. Okay. because I. But just like they some... didn't have the authors. Because there's... I don't know. Okay. It's not a faithful retelling. Okay. But I think that one borrowed a lot from this. Okay. So anyway, I love this book a lot. I'm hoping you'll like it too. And, uh, so far, so good. Yeah, it's long. So if you need to give up. Another but... cool cover. Well, no, that's yeah. <laughs> not allowed to give up. There are that's also things I don't like about this book, though, so we can talk about that yeah. as well. Uh, so this next one, I uh, also think you know what's coming. I'm going to save the best for last. Uh, so this one is... Yay! One that, you <laughs> <laughs> that you were going to read when I originally had bought it. Um, and uh, How many years ago? This is when we were working in the restaurant. So like four <laughs> years ago, three years ago, something like that. Yeah. So, Lies of Lakamora. It is a fantasy series uh, in a make-believe uh, world with their a band of thieves and basically how they go about think like heist slash fantasy kind of stories. It's something that you've mentioned being interested in. It's got sort of the cocksure main character who's very confident in himself so hopefully that doesn't he can't be worse than quote <laughs> probably <laughs> <He> not can't <laughs> <laughs> probably not uh, he's a little more charming a little more funny uh it's very clever i like um i like heist movies i like heist stories it's almost like a mystery in reverse in a way uh Ooh. i really like that kind of thing so the lines of Locke lamora like i said you were very, obviously very ex excited i'm excited about we talked about doing this challenge yeah. um a a few weeks earlier about what books we'd give to each other and you mentioned this one and I just like latched onto that idea because yeah. it's like I've been meaning to read this and I've been really craving some fantasy in my life yeah um, I mean I've been trying to get you to read it for years so no but I mean like now right I, now too like while we're like kind of stuck at home like I've just been looking for some more like excitement in my reading <laughs> life um to use my imagination and stuff so I did want to start a fantasy series so I'm hoping then I'm going to like this one and I can keep going with it. Yeah, there's um, a, we have two other ones if you enjoy that one. Yeah, so that's what I'm hoping. It will keep me entertained while we are housebound for the next <laughs> few weeks. All right, okay. uh, the last one that I got for you is kind of the more, like, serious book on the list. Mm. Uh, some nonfiction. And uh, this is, as we have always done, Indigenous Freedom Through Radical Resistance. Well, I'm, I've already been radicalized, so... Yeah, I know. You've been kind of into more, like, radical politics lately and I thought this kind of addresses that from an indigenous perspective uh, Leanne Bedesam Sake let me look this up what nation is she from see I like that because this is something that's important to you so okay. I like again coming kind of a little bit of your yourself in the book <laughs> yeah she's from the Alderville First Nation in Ontario and she's Michi Sagi Nishinaabeg and she is crazy smart <laughs> and this book um it was mind-blowing like when I read it uh the way that she writes 
about her culture, her history, and the future that she envisions. It was really thought provoking. Okay. And it's been like, it's been a while since I read this, but she's one of my favorite Indigenous authors. And this book was brilliant. Okay. And yeah, gives you a lot to think about. So important stuff for Canadians to be like reading. That. All I right. Like I hope you like this one. All right. So my last one is also nonfiction. Yeah, this learning. is probably the one you're going to be least excited about. Oh no! It is called. Oh no! Weapons of math destruction. No, not math. <laughs> you don't have to. Do... <laughs> you don't have to do any math. Uh, so basically, just this... kidding. I'm a good sport. <laughs> <laughs> Weapons of math destruction. It's about um, oh, basically big data. I can't believe you're trolling me like this. I'm not trolling you. It's about big data and sort of how it's. Um, the idea of using big data and how we sort of run the world is that it can make things more fair and get rid of biases and all that. But really, a lot of the time what ends up happening is reinforcing pre-existing biases, but now having science and math to back up uh, yourself. And so you can there can be inappropriate and uh, bad policy ideas being done based on numbers and science, mm. but it's actually still very skewed and for a lot of different reasons so math is evil <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so i can get interpretation on board with that. In, inappropriate interpretations of math can be evil which is why it's mm. weapons of math destruction yeah so uh it's not too it's not too heavy on math okay okay it's more about the concepts i'm ideas. not gonna be asked to do calculations no like no they do all the calculations <laughs> for you they it's Spread it out. Okay. Kathy O'Neill. Thank Ugh. you, Kathy. Very readable book. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is one I, I ripped through pretty quickly as well. Uh, I think you'll, whether you enjoy the math and the way it's broken down, I don't know, but the ideas and the concepts behind it is something that I have been very interested in, and I think you will be as well. All right. I'll have to take your word on it. This one <laughs> is probably the one that scares me the most, although it looks yeah, like maybe. it's the slimmest volume. Yeah. This one's around yeah 230 pages yeah. so that's actually doable and that's kind of the reason why I wanted to do this project is to like encourage me and you as well to like break out of our niches and our comfort zones because yes. I always like to think that I'm so like <laughs> exploratory with my reading but then I find myself that I do kind of yeah. have certain comfort zones and certain familiarities so okay. this would be a nice chance to try things that I would never pick up otherwise no. I'm going to ask you to okay. preemptively rate the three books in order from the ah. one you think you're going to like the most to the think you're going to like the least so that we can compare later. Okay. So I think I'm going to like Locke Lamora the most. Okay. This is kind of in my wheelhouse a little bit. I do like fantasy and I do feel like I'm in the right mood for it. So okay. I think this one is going to be my favorite of the three. And then I think I'm going to go weapons of math, dis math discretion. Weapons of math destruction. <laughs> and then I think I'm going to go with weapons of math destruction for my second choice. Again, because it's short. And I do think that it will be thought provoking mm -hmm. once I get over my like internalized hatred of math and science, which is not appropriate. I shouldn't feel that way. <laughs> um, so I, I, yeah, I think that this one will be valuable. Okay. And then the Reacher <laughs> one is the wild card. So I'm going to put this one as the one that I'm going to like the least. I think I can't see myself jiving with this but i think it could be fun to read it like i think it will make me laugh at a few yeah. points but i don't think i'll get like that much value out of it i think if you just buckle in for the ride <laughs> yeah uh and go for it it might end up even being the one you like the most but you're not gonna read anymore who knows Does that makes sense i don't know this could be a game changer for me yeah and there's a whole world of this if i do like it how about you what do you think with your Mine, with your these pile are tough mm -hmm. these are tough Three good choices. There's none that I'm like scared of. Well, that's There's good. none that I'm like. I always love a good short story. Um, but okay, I'm gonna go with Prayer for Owen Meany. I'm gonna put as the one I'm. I think I'm gonna like the most, just by the way you sold it to me. Uh, <laughs> you based it on. You mentioned uh, Fifth Business, which is a story that I really got into. So yes. I'm gonna put that one number one. I'm going to put. <laughs> I'm gonna put the as we've always done. Number two, the nonfiction, because I like the idea of a radical resistance. That sounds like something I could maybe get behind. Uh, so I'm going to put that number two. And then, like I said, I do like short stories, but they're very hit or miss. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily going to be the one I like the most. The story, one story in here might be something I like more than everything else. But yeah. hitting on every That's short true. story in a book can That's sometimes true. be tough. 
So I'm going to put that one third. But they're still all ones that I'm excited to read. So Nice. All right. So that's it for us today. We are now going to start getting to work and <laughs> reading these books. Um, so hopefully we will be updating you. What do you think? Within a few weeks? I don't want to commit to a number. We don't want to commit. We also are moving. <laughs> we have to best. pack up our whole apartment. We're moving to a house. So there's a lot Amen. happening right now in our lives. But I am hoping we can get this done in a few weeks. And when we do, we will be sure to film like an update wrap up. So yeah, that's it for our challenge. Thanks so much, Taylor, for joining me today thank you for having me. on this exciting adventure. <laughs> and thank you all for watching this video. We hope that you're doing well. We'll see Bye you guys. later. Bye.